So we're going to talk about uh, Kepler's law from chapter four. Kepler's law from chapter sorry chapter three. Kepler's law from chapter three. Gravitation. Okay. Kepler's law. There are three Kepler's law. Kepler's law. First Kepler's law. The second Kepler's law and the third Kepler's law. So, so there are three Kepler's law. Huh? First, second, and third. According to the first Kepler's law, all planets move in elliptical orbits, elliptical orbits, with the sun at one focus. All right, with the sun at one focus. We call this law of orbits. All right. Okay. So if you see this diagram, you should know it's like there are two orbits together, and when they merge, they form an elliptical larger orbit. So for the rotation or revolution of Earth around the Sun, or the mass around the Sun, Kepler is observing mass, right? Mass around the Sun. The Sun is at one of the focus, and the other one, there's nothing there. So that's why, according to Kepler's first law, he's telling all planets move in elliptical orbits with the Sun at one of the focus. Law of orbits. I will explain in detail in a while. Huh? And then this is Kepler's first law. Okay, you just need to know the law. Very simple. All planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. That's all. If they ask you what is Kepler's law, all planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. That's all. Okay. Next. See here carefully. This is the rotation of the planet around the sun okay so rotation of the planet around the sun actually there's an empty focus too so there's it does not exist actually but we know because of the shape of electrical in mathematical order we make it in a point that one there are two for key so one is the focus one and focus two so or for c la two for c so in in focus one the sun so what is kepler's first law all planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. Okay, now we go for Kepler's second law. Kepler's second law: a line that connects a planet, a line that connects a planet to the sun, sweeps out equal areas in equal time. A line that connects a planet to the sun. Sweeps out equal areas in equal times. Okay, see here. You see carefully, yeah. The let's say the planets moving around the sun now. Okay, let's say all the blue area, all the blue area, the time to travel in the orbit is equal. Let's say all the blue area perfectly takes about let's say a uh, hundred days, for example, chuntola hundred days. So the other blue day also 100 days. The other blue day also 100 days, right? So when they travel, this is called the equal area and equal time, equal area and equal time law, you know? So when they move in the blue area, since they travel in the same time frame, all right, the area covered in that orbit is equal. So according to Kepler's second law, a line that connects a planet to the sun a line that connects a planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. Sweeps out what? Equal areas in equal times. This is called law of areas. Law of what? Areas. Okay, so I hope you understand. Look at the gray portion area. If let's say each gray portion, as the, as the earth moves around the sun, let's say they, all the gray area takes, let's say, 100 days. So each hundred days they travel, the area covered is the same in the orbit. Huh? Okay, next. Kepler's third law. The square of the orbital period, the square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional. The square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional 
to the cube of the radius of its orbit. The square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbit. This is called law of period. All right? You see here carefully. Two planets are orbiting around the sun. Okay, so we know that according to Kepler's third law, the square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbit. So different planet will have different orbital time frame period. So you square it, uh, square it, you'll get square it, uh, square it, you'll get it's directly proportional to the cube of the radius from the planet, all right? To the cube of the radius from the planet. So these are the three Kepler's law, okay? So just go through again. First law says that all planets connect in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. Second law says that, this is the first law. This is the first law. All planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. Next, we have the second law. Kepler's second law, a line that connects a planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. We call this law of areas. Law of what? Areas. Equal area, equal time. Right? You can see here, as the planet is moving around the Earth, if the gray area, the time to travel in the circle is equal, the area is equal. The area is equal. Then we have Kepler's third law. The square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbit. Law of period. This is the law of periods. You can see here, it's moving. So different planets will have different orbital time period. The radius also there. So the square of the orbital time period is directly proportional to the cube of the radius, all right? To the cube of the radius. According to Kepler's third law, all right, the square of the orbital period, the square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbit, law of period. I repeat again, the square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbit, law of period. Let's take this planet A. Planet A, planet A. This is planet A, okay? Planet A is orbiting the sun, orbiting the sun in the green circle. Planet A is going around the sun in green circle. The time taken for planet A to complete one orbital period is called time t, all right? Time t is the time taken, it's called orbital period time. Orbital period time, okay? Orbital period time is the time taken to complete one orbit. The radius is the distance from the center of the sun to the center of the planet, this is the radius, all right? Okay, now we're going to use these informations to show that the period square is directly proportional to the r cube, the radius cube. Huh? Okay, let's try. We know that centripetal force is equivalent to m p square over r. Why are we using this formula? See here again. All right. If you see here, this is planet A. It is under the influence of the gravitational force of the sun. But since it is having a circular acceleration, it is spinning around the sun. So it is having a centripetal force towards the sun. It is having the gravitational force towards the sun. The centripetal force is equivalent to, okay, 
equivalent to F equals to mv square over R. Now the gravitational force is equal to universal gravitational constant value, the mass of the sun, the mass of the planet over R square. Over R square. All right. And all of us know that whenever any object is moving around the bigger object, for example, this is the planet, this is planet A, it's moving around the sun. All right. As it's moving around the sun, the planet A moving around the sun. All right. We know that the speed of rotation, the speed of rotation, or the circular speed should be 2 pi r circumference over the period taken to complete the orbit. So what is the speed or circular speed? 2 pi r, the circumference over the period. Now, see here again. We know the same planet which is going around the sun is having centripetal force and gravitational force. We know that, excuse me, both of these forces are equal. Centripetal force is equal to the gravitational force. So mv square over r. The m here is the mass of the planet, the mass of the planet equals to Gravitational constant value, mass of the sun, mass of the earth over r square. So this is mass of the sun and this is mass of the earth. This is mass of the earth, mass of the earth, mass of the earth or any planet or the mass. When we look at here, we knew that we can take off this to so what is left here is, we can take off this also, sorry. Take off this, left with one R. So we will have a formula of V square equivalent to, right, GM over R. GM over R. As we know, the speed is equals to 2 pi R over T. So when we substitute this value inside here, we will get 2 pi r over t square equivalent to g m over r. Right? So what happened here is that when we solve this, we will get 2 pi r over t, the whole thing power 2, equivalent to gm over r, gm over r. So we will get 4 pi square r square over period square equals to g m r. So when now we bring the r here and t here. So we will get 4 pi square r cube equals to t square g m. Now if I rearrange, I'll get t square gm equals to 4 pi square r cube. Now, if I complete the equation, I will get t square equals to 4 pi square over gm, right? And the whole thing is times with r cube. So if you look at it here clearly, guys, we look at here clearly, 4 pi square over gm, 
this can be taken as a constant value. To take this as a constant value, we can rewrite the whole equation as t square equals to a constant value of r cube. That is why we told just now, or I said just now, or Kepler's law says that t square is directly proportional to r cube. t square is directly proportional to r cube. Because according to Kepler's third law, the square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbit. The square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbit. So the period square directly proportional to the cube of the radius, right? Any question?